Oh, that is starting now. Go ahead, Gary. Okay. Um, so uh, we've, uh, I think we all know everybody. I think we don't have anybody new. Well, maybe, I don't know, Beth, have you been on uh, one of our board meetings yet? No, not a budget board meeting. Yeah, budget board. Okay. So uh, the first thing on the agenda is for me to quit talking and uh, for the committee to nominate someone to to be the chair of the budget board uh, meeting this evening. I wonder, uh, uh, Gary, if uh, we could do one more roll call because I thought Bob was here and I don't see him listed. Is he well, not? He, I've he, used his phone, everybody. Yeah. I, I'm familiar with Zoom, but I haven't used this new system and I was afraid to try it. Oh, oh yeah, I, I usually do Zoom too, Bob, but this worked out just fine. Yeah. But you're there, right? Yeah. He, I'd, I'd like to nominate Linda to be our. I still didn't hear a roll call. Oh. Sorry. Uh, well, we can do a roll call. Everybody, uh, we'll, we'll go. I'll just go down through the uh, through the line. I mean, uh, this is Gary Dealman, and uh, uh, Betty's. I think is not here yet, but uh, uh, Kyra, you're here, and uh, Harry's covering up all my people, <laughs> and Beth, Beth, you're here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Francis, don't know if Francis has her, her uh, uh, speaker on yet, uh, but I know we, she was listed uh, on the screen. And uh, Aletha, you're here. Um, uh, Linda, uh, can we hear your voice, Please. Linda? And I think so. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, very good. Uh, Joy, Joy Lee Master. Yeah, yes, I'm here. And I would turn on my camera, but I'm not sure how to do that. Um, okay, and then Anne Mahaffey is, is not going to be here. So we've got everybody except uh, Betty. And I'm sure she'll be here shortly. Well, there's Francis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see. Uh, there's Francis. Yeah, we'll tell uh, and tell um, Linda how to... So, uh, are there any more nominations? Bob nominated uh, Linda. Any more nominations to be chair? Second class. I move we close the nomination. Okay, stop freaking out. We have a uh, we have a second on closing nominations, uh, which yeah. would uh, would uh, then make Linda our chairperson. Oh, there, Betty just arrived. I second the motion to close the nominations. Okay, we got a, a motion and a second uh, that. Uh, Linda be our chairperson for this evening's meeting, uh, board meeting, uh, budget board meeting. Uh, all those in favor uh, say aye. 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 All those, aye. All those opposed say aye. no or nay. Okay. Uh, that means that I step away and Linda, you take over. Um, okay, I'll do. Uh, can you guys see? You can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you. Okay. So it looks like what we have next is the additions from the agenda. Any additions or deletions of the agenda? No. What was that? 
I, th I think that's just background noise, Linda. <laughs> um, how about any conflicts or potential conflicts of interest? Of interest? No? Nobody? No. No. Uh, see. So then I think that Harry can take over for the uh, and present the budget. All right. Thank you. So I'm going to start with the budget message. And since I sent this out to yesterday, we found some additional monies even, um, which is hey. great news. So we, the original one, uh, the figure that I was working with was the 2,363,775. We bumped that up to 2 million. 475,375 dollars and let me just show you how we came to that real quick all right so uh, on Monday we got a letter from the Baker County Treasurer that uh, announced there was a resolution of a property tax dispute and we were getting uh, about 53,000 in prior taxes extra and about um, I think 15,000 uh, in addition to our uh, current year tax levies, which I think we had already allocated. But um, going back to my uh, tax revenue sheet, which I'd been struggling with a little bit because things have been so up and down lately, um, not matching my projections. Um, that puts us more on tracks to receive the uh, amount that I'd budgeted for this year, or the amount that, that the calculations project for this year, about 840,000 uh, for the current year tax, or the, the permanent year tax rate levy and then local option tax we'd get about 330 so I adjusted those in the budget uh, for this current year local option levy added 10,000 for the adjustment so that was 30,000 for the current year and then 53,000 for prior year 83,000 there we added that to the budget reporting sheet and because they kind of calculate transfers twice, transfers out, um, that 25,000 turns into 50, so we get up to uh, 108,000 there. And then uh, Christine discovered that our interest was actually coming in uh, ahead of what I had projected. I was going to drop it down from our $15,000 um, that we that we'd originally budgeted down to 12, uh, but she actually found it was coming in uh, at a rate that we should get 15,000. So we added 3,000 there. And also we're getting some interest in the reserve fund capital investment. So these uh, lines, the capital reserve went from 90 to 91, six, and the general fund increased as well uh, from from 1623 to 1709. So all great news that puts us in a better, even better fiscal position for our cash carryover. All right, so the main objectives of the budget are the, the principles and goals. Uh, this budget reflects the library taking a defensive tactical position to contend with impacts from the pandemic. That includes anticipating decreased revenues this next year, a little slower growth, and significantly increased costs, mainly by uh, the personnel, health insurance line, and enhanced facilities management contracts. We have to upgrade our cleaning contract from a four-day week schedule to a seven-day week schedule and add 
cleaning contract for each of the branch locations. And renovation projects um, necessary to to uh, safeguard community and staff safety that uh, are things like touchless plumbing fixtures, the flushing toilets, the uh, uh, hand no no touch uh, faucets, and no touch um, soap dispensers and towel dispensers. Just trying to minimize or eliminate all of the things that could be transmission vectors in our facilities. Plus, looking at our air quality systems in the in the building in general, uh, with our heating and air conditioning system, making sure we're getting fresh air clean air in here, especially in our smaller rooms, our office spaces, and our study rooms are a concern for a virus uh, load that could hang in the air for uh, up to three hours or more. So, as you all know, the budget uh, consists of four funds, the general fund where most of the activity happens, our other uses fund where we keep memorial and grant monies and special project funds um, and some reserves. The SAGE fund, which uh, we're the fiscal agent of the SAGE library system and that is approved by that agency and we just manage the money for them. And the reserve fund for capital improvement and investment. Uh, which we just established last year. So the dominant principles are stewardship, responsible stewardship of public assets, prior, prioritizing resources for community and staff safety through the active pandemic and the post-pandemic periods. We'll make strategic investments in maintenance services, facilities renovations for safety and preservation of assets. So that preservation of assets is referring to building repair projects. I will also ensure debt-free district operation by building our reserve funds adequate for self-sufficient operations and planned capital improvements. And finally, as always, we will sustain exceptional library services to the community with skilled staff, up-to-date technology, high-speed internet access, and quality materials in various formats, physical, um, audio, digital. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, the primary revenue streams for the current year budget are um, budgeted conservatively. So this last year, the uh, county evaluation grew by 3.8%. Year prior to that was 4.2, and prior to that was 3.7. So, um, anticipating a, kind of a recessionary period from the pandemic, uh, we're dropping that growth valuation down to 2%. Looking back um, to 2006 and 7, and that covers the Great Recession period, the growth rate has never really gone below 2.3, 2.4. So 2% is a very conservative rate. If that valuation rate changes by 1% plus or minus, that equates to a, a increase or decrease of about $10,000. And most likely it will be higher than 2%. Um, one of the reasons Anne Mahaffey couldn't be here tonight, she said, is because the real estate market is crazy busy. Um, people want to move out of their uh, congested areas and to a, a rural area like we have. So uh, property value use will probably continue to be strong. Uh, fines and fees, however, um, because we've been closed and uh, for about 60 days now and expect to be reopening 
with limited uh, metering of visitation, just a few people at a time. We won't have as m many proceeds from uh, use of our copier, from faxing services, um, just fines in general. We've extended um, due dates and we'll be very lenient about uh, waiving fines. So we're cutting that um, yield by 55% for the coming year. That is a fairly minor portion of our total budget, however. So the reserves for operations, we expect to have uh, 400 to 405,000 actually now. Uh, reserve for capital improvement of over 90,000. Those are strongly situated due to unanticipated surplus revenues from large property development sales and uh, settlements in recent years. The operation reserve is used to fund the library operations from July to November when we get our tax disbursements. Uh, generally, we run out of our reserves and we have to borrow from ourselves from the pool in the other funds. Um, this year, however, we may be able to operate with $400,000 without having to borrow anything from the other fund. And that would be a special, special year. Yeah. Um, in the personnel division, insurance rates are spiking by 15%. Um, spiked by 7% last year and 2% uh, the year prior to that. So past three years, it's gone up about 25%. PERS, we're in the second year of the biennium. So they're stable this year, but are expected to spike again next year, especially if the market doesn't recover, or even if it does, there's this period where it's uh, suffered and um, PERS will have to make adjustments for that loss of their investments. So current projections are that our PERS costs will grow by $16,000, not this year, but next time we meet, we'll be planning for that. Salaries, I've included a 1% cost of living increase, uh, which uh, if you've read the, the packet materials, I'm encouraging us to think of as a hazard pay this year um, because we're not able to provide health care benefits for all of our employees. Just I think 10 are on the benefits eligibility uh, level and a lot of our entry-level staff, paraprofessional staff, um, work directly with the public. Um, we don't have a hazard pay mechanism, so the 1% cost of living is a way to think about that. And also, keep growing our wages to um, keep ahead of the, the minimum wage, which the state has mandated increase of 50%. 50 cents each year. This next year it'll be at $11.50, um, which puts pressure on the wages up above it. Yeah. Um, we've got seven staff eligible for step, step increases and one reclassification, um, promotion for expanded re responsibilities. Um, I was able to add a half an hour a week to the branch staff hours. Um, they'll have more cleaning requirements. So taken as a whole, the employee salary and benefits increased by 2%. That's well below the 69, 70% of the operating budget goal that we have. But, and that 2% increase is primarily due to health insurance costs. In the materials and services division, the collection development, uh, we're beginning at around $102,000, uh, which is a um, pretty typical uh, amount to start with. Compared to our total budget, which is growing, uh, the percent of our operating budget is 8%, which we like to try to have it at 10%, but we've rarely gotten to that goal, although we have been lucky this last couple of years. Uh, facilities maintenance, as I mentioned, for safety, we'll be investing in uh, um, 
renovation projects and we've also are still tackling deferred maintenance our next couple of big projects are uh, dealing with the aged and dilapidated wooden siding at the Baker branch um, hopefully we'll be able to get started on repairing our roof the new roof layer and that money will mostly come out of the uh, capital improvement uh, reserve fund um, but we've got a whole list of projects that I uh, included in the agenda notes. Other significant increases, uh, new janitorial contracts, as I mentioned, from four days a week to seven days. More cleaning supplies will be needed. Uh, more personal protective equipment for staff. This pandemic is expected to continue in waves for a y one year to three years. Hmm. Oh. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully they'll have that uh, vaccine that's been discussed in the news as promising, um, and it'll be working and with no side effects, and we'll be we can put this episode behind us. Um, also, we'll be uh, increasing our publication line for marketing of library materials. Uh, this last year, I've had an ad in the TV guide insert. You've seen that on the second page. We've got a good spot for that, so we'll continue that. Um, utilities are up based on recent history, mostly for the heating. And youth programming will be strong for summer reading programs and story times. Overall, the materials and services increases by... 9.2%, that's about $35,000 as compared to the original adopted budget this year. There are negligible changes to the other fund and SAGE fund from this past year. SAGE did uh, approve and we, we actually paid out $15,000 from the SAGE reserves to the digital catalog of Library to Go for um, more content there to be to supply the demand with everybody not being able to check out physical books. But the SAGE um, reserve is ample to fund their operations until they get their membership fees in. The reserve fund for capital investment uh, is boosted with that uh, $25,000. Um, that's on top of 10,000 we were planning to allocate, so that makes 35,000 plus the 55 that we started with will be over $90,000 in there. And my concluding statements, this is a large but collective task. I thank Christine and uh, for all of her help, especially these last few adjustments we were able to add. Um, Heather found some discrepancies in the hours, so I fixed those. Uh, Letha for her mentorship and providing the model and my training of how I learned to do this. Um, Dan Mitchell and the Gaslin accounting firm and you guys for your considered continued oversight. Um, and donated time. We really appreciate that to get our business done. So now I will go through the budget sheets. Does anybody have any comments or questions about the budget message? Well, I do have one, yes. if I might. Um, uh, it's, it's not the it's not an explanation or clarification of the message, but I'm curious about um, the I think the hazard pay is a is a really positive thing to have done, but I'm wondering about any other cost of living for employees because I don't see that there was a general cost of living this year that's possibly deferred. Uh, is that is that am I misunderstanding or is that correct that there's no broad cost of living increase? That's um, the one percent. It's the same. The, Cost of living increase slash hazard pay, same same thing. But uh, I see. we do have the option of 
uh, increasing that if you like since we are uh, pretty flush with our reserves and um, actually that's what I was thinking Perry yeah, since okay. gold found money and and I know that two percent is still conservative mm -hmm. so you found two percent mm -hmm. and the increases in the past and and also how it might compare with the other government entities that we try to you know march Kind of mm -hmm. step by step. Uh, so those are my questions. So I haven't um, verified with the county, but I expect you know that they're not flexible, not so flexible with their union contract um, scheduled pay increase. Uh, they're prob they're generally around two percent a year increase uh, at the county, but we could increase the cost of living increase to two percent that would be another six thousand dollars in personnel you went up, think. if you went to three percent that would be twelve thousand dollars because uh, sooner or later we end up playing catch up if we don't kind of stick with it and um there is a, that bit of found money, and I know how critical the capital projects are. I know that they're absolutely critical, but, you know, we don't want to have to play catch up. And also, if the state mandates are crowding our bottom lines, we don't want to be in that position either. So I'm, I, I'm throwing that out for other people to consider as well. Yeah. So on your screen here, I did produce this spreadsheet um, that shows our uh, paraprofessional wages and what they would look like at the different cost of living increase rates. So this top one is with 0% and then they mm -hmm. increase by 1% as you go down. Um, this is a comparative figure, 36 cents over the 0% if you were to go to the top. Um, so we could do any of those and we have a plenty of money to do any of those. My one concern would be um, in public relations, basically. How does, how does increasing government staff wages beyond what is projected to be the cost of uh, consumer price index rate uh, how and what would that be perceived in the public, especially um, in light of our next year needing to have the local option levy passed? That would be my guess, one concern. Is the consumer price index one percent, or is it two? Yeah. So right now they just it just dropped this last report by 0.4 percent, which bring brought it down to 1.3. And it's expected to continue in negative um, figures for the next couple of months, which would bring it down below 1% for the fiscal year. Perry, uh, could you, do you have a graph that would show the history of the... Um, the cost of living increase? The cost of living increases that we've had the last few years? Yes. Um, I did have a message from Betty asking for the uh for the link let me just email that to her real quick Perry, I, i'm in now oh did you make it okay thank you okay let me find the cost of living report hey perry would it be okay if i shared my thought on that i relayed to you earlier about this of course. The other idea, cost yes. of living increase. Yep. Is that all right? Yeah, of course. Okay, so one of the points that Perry mentioned in his budget message, it was the idea of the hazard pay and then also keeping up with the, which you've just discussed, and then also keeping up with the um, minimum wage. And so my thought was, is that 1% on the median wage at the current rates that we've uh, got everybody budgeted at, 
is a raise increase 1% at about 14 cents. So if we went to 2% or 3%, we would be getting closer to the fact that state, the Oregon has mandated a 50 cent increase, kind of keeping wages in line with minimum wage. So that was my thought, whatever you, um, just throw it out there. I, may I also um, offer a thought? Perry, on when you said concern about you know going out for the local option levy and the perception of the public and so on, uh, there is a there is the opposite effect that could be a perception that if we only do one percent and start falling behind the our local community that we're not doing well that we're struggling or something, you know that we're not managing the money either. A two percent. Um, I'm just throwing these out because I'm not saying let's do it. I'm just saying a 2% is certainly defensible. And a 1% might sound like we're struggling and 3% would be too much. But that that's just another way of looking at the 1%. So I have a question uh, for uh, Christine. Uh, Christine, what uh, what would be the uh, the what would it take in the way of a percent raise to get us up to what the state is going to have as a minimum wage? I thought that we were already uh, well above the minimum wage. We are. There's, um, let me go pull that, pull that up real quick and I can tell you. Our starting wage is higher than minimum wage. My point is, is that as minimum wage increases and those wages that we've already been paying that were a little bit better become, you know, they um, degrade as the minimum wage increases. So that was my thought. Let me go pull this up and I can give you Gail. I can, I can display it here, Christine. The, the minimum wage, so as of July 1st, Will be 11.50, and our starting wage will be declassifying or deactivating this 3.2 uh, will be 12.11. So we'll, we're still 50 cents above that for our minimum wage. Did that answer your question, Gary? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. So most likely we won't have anybody I think paid it. Let me see. Let me take a look at the budget salary. We always try to attract the mm -hmm. quality people in the community. And, uh, and we don't like losing them to other entities. Right. Uh, just for just for uh, salary increases, um, and we don't know how it compares now with uh, New York County at this point. The city's always been higher. We have, but the county's been kind of a parallel. So the only folks that are paid at that uh, lower lowest level entry level are our shelvers, our high school shelving pages. That would be with a one percent at twelve twenty three, so almost seventy five cents uh, above minimum wage. This next year at one percent, um, but if we went with a two percent, their their wage would be twelve thirty five. If you went with a uh, Three percent, it would be twelve forty-seven, so almost a dollar more than minimum. Harry, well, most, I'm, of, I'm most of our staff, Sorry. our adult staff that work with us, at what level are they? What's it exactly? Most of them. Didn't, Christine said the the average is about fourteen dollars. No, we, that's not the average. That was the median. The median. So the middle one, the average is more along the this 1471. Is that, with, go. is that with the one percent or is that current wages? 
Uh, that's what the one percent. I think that's current, actually. Fourteen seventy-one. Is that current? Is, yeah. Gary? Right. I can go do a quick calculation and tell you. So here's the salary line. But they really range from about thirteen. Here's the current year, from about thirteen thirty. up to 2070. Have we, have we done a, recent, uh, a fairly recent comparison with your districts in our region? It's a couple years old now. Um, we, our staff wages were pretty low in general compared to the, the, the libraries that we looked at for that but yeah we do need to look at that again and if we don't get the the increase that we might expect from our from our base tax if we don't give that we might fall that much lower i mean if you know if there's income increase from our our base tax mm -hmm. of two percent uh, and others are giving it, which we don't know, then we're falling even further behind. And we so don't I really just did a calculation of our general staff, and the average yeah. is 1393 an hour. If you start adding in the administrative staff, then of course that bumps up real fast and comes up to 1439. Oh, I missed a couple. Why would the why would the average matter? It's, I don't know. Somebody asked me for it, and I gave it to you. Oh, I know, I know. I'm just I'm just asking that question. Whoever asked the question, why why would that be significant? I was asking what the difference is between our high school workers who earn the lowest wage and what our adult medium or average was. That's yeah. what I was. So if you so Christine, when you calculated that, did you take out the high school wages? I did not, but I could do that real quick. You just want yeah, the I'm adult not, workers. I'm not opposed to a two percent raise, but I I agree with what Perry's saying. We need to be careful about our county and our you know our, the wages within our county. It's kind of tough for our county people to see us giving a two percent raise in a time when we're maybe in a negative. Uh, market for what they're earning. So I understand both sides of that question. Okay, so the average taking out the pages, the teenagers, is 14.31. And that's just the general staff, not including admin. We can rock this ideas back and forth, but I would propose we go to the two percent and pass it with the rest of you. Do we need a motor? Is that what is just you know here? No. You know, and there okay. is a there, there is a final uh, adoption of the budget in June by the board itself, excluding us. And if we did the 2% and if Perry in the meantime did some research and discovered that everyone else was going far less than that, then the, the library board could drop it back. All right. Which is kind of a selling point if we're worried about the levy, you know. Yeah, at that at that final uh, time when when just the uh, the library budget board or library board is 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 considering what the budget board has done, we can adjust it. I believe five percent up or down w without having to have a some kind of special session to do it. Well, that's true, and you could do the same. You could stick to the one percent, and then 
bump it up if you discover uh, in the region or with the county in general that 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 there are others that are meeting the two percent. Yes, and and that's that's what I would prefer uh, because we don't presently have that. Um, uh, comparison with the county, which we try to stay fairly close to what the county's been doing. Yeah, but as I said, they're they have they're unionized, and they're a lot less flexible than us. Right. Um, but the reason that we're not unionized is because we've been trying to march in lockstep with right the groups because just, we could be yeah i'm just really apprehensive about in a time when people are losing their jobs furloughed not able to make a living we would be increasing our staff wages i think that could be a really negative story in the paper mm -hmm. that would impact our local option levy vote in, in this next year. And I really appreciate the fact that you're calling it hazard pay. I think it's really appropriate. So um, I would recommend that we continue with Perry's recommendation. And I would really ask you, Perry, if you could do a comparison with the region so that we have more information going forward, you know, to compare with, that would be really good. Yeah. So I, I think it's a good uh, idea, Lisa. Bob might have had a motion out there, though. I'm not sure whether Bob said something, and it may have been a motion. It was just a thought. Uh, we have been, you know, talking about this both ways, and uh, I think that personally, I think we ought to leave it like it is. It's one percent, and let the library board make the decision later on. If they want to raise it, they can. They can do what they want with it. But right now, it looks like it's all right at 1%. And I, I think it was worth discussing, really, because uh, because that's always a big issue about uh, the quality of people that we have providing the services that, that we do. So thanks, Perry, for sticking with me on that. Yeah, it's a, it's a good discussion to have, as you said. All right. So we were going to start back with uh, the budget, legal budget sheets on LB20. Just go through those. Let me find, find my 20 sheet here. Okay. So general fund resources. As I've said, we've really been able to boost our cash carryover. So um, it's a, couldn't have come at a better time. You look back at 1819, we were at um, about 200,000. Uh, this year, we were able to bump it to 320, and we are we should have about 430 cash carryover for this next year. 25,000 of that we're going to transfer out into the uh, capital Improvement Fund. Uh, so a lot of these infusions of cash have come from the previous, the prior year taxes. So uh, this year we had budgeted 35,000, which is fairly typical historical amount. Uh, we're bumping that up to 138,000. And next year, we're budgeting for the standard 35000 Interest um, should be about 15000 We're not expecting that to grow. Interest rates have actually been decreasing, so I've reduced that for the proposed budget from the 15000 we expect this year to twelve. Our transfers in from other funds are a combination of uh, sales from online surplus books and uh, election reserve funds. This next year, with our uh, ballot, our portion of cost for the having the ballot run, uh, it will be about six thousand dollars. 
and we will be transferring 3000 from our other fund to help support that cost. Here's the fines and fees um, that I mentioned we're cutting back for the proposed year. We've generally been getting close to $20,000 um, from copies and faxes and lost books and uh, replacement library cards and late fines. Um, next year, we're cutting that down to $9,000. The Ready to Read grant, uh, which is comes from a block grant to the state uh, for early literacy programs, should it be stable at eight thousand dollars. Our other tax revenues is uh, highly variable, so we've just kind of got a place taker of five hundred dollars for that. E-rate funds. That's a federal program to sub subsidize our uh, telecommunications. Um, almost exclusively internet costs now expected to stay about seven thousand dollars and various donations and grants is are expected to be stable fiscal agency fee from sage is an unchanged and other financing sources i've bumped that up uh this year to nine thousand and next year for five thousand um since there will be an opportunity for us to get some public assistance grants from FEMA. Um, there's also some money from the state that I'll be applying for this for this year for our expenses related to the pandemic. So uh, taxes estimated to be received for this year increase that to 25,000 by 25,000 for the revised budget and next year it will grow um, by 42,000. Any questions about the resources, LB20? I just want to make a comment here, which, you know, when we look at that cash carryover, which seems like generous, and like you said, Perry, wouldn't it be great if we could get through all of that period where we don't have any income coming in and, and have, have to borrow from anybody besides our own selves. Mm -hmm. um, I've just gotten off a statewide call that indicates that probably through 2025, we're going to be affected by um, the COVID-19 pandemic. And that, and they're telling us to tighten our budgets and our belts for that three to five year period moving out. And so I think it's wise to keep a healthy carryover balance. We don't know how we're going to have to appropriate as we move forward. We might be pleasantly surprised and be able to plow that back into operations, but it's not a bad thing for us to have a healthy carryover at this time. Yeah. Harry, is that carryover, is that figured at a percentage or uh, is there a way to kind of come up with that, a, a healthy number? Do you know? Yeah. So we we look at what we need to operate for those months um, up until November. And let me go to the budget notes because that's why I put this table in to show you our quarterly expenses uh, history. So from July to September, you can see. Uh, this last year we spent about 284,000, so it's about $100,000 a month. So we add one more month of October, that's uh, 400,000 there. So that's how we kind of come up with that uh, reserve goal. Does that make sense? So yeah. we got the about 300,000 here and then a third of the second quarter divide that by three so 300 plus okay yeah okay thank you mm -hmm. does that sound right christine yes okay all right let's go to the lb um 30 which is the summary Actually, we'll we'll go to the 
the details sheets and then we'll come back to the summary. So let's go to the LB31 for personal services. And this is a list of all of the positions plus our pool for substitute staff and benefits and we do have some variation from the we changes for this year um, just based on um, uh, staff hires the gaps in hires uh, changes in schedules people taking vacation unpaid leave uh, various things so those are always adjusted at the end but uh, it's best to compare the original budget to the proposed budget so uh, our IT systems administrator has gone down to 12 hours a week he's uh, re retired and been rehired as a retiree We're reclassing our business manager up uh, one level for increased human resources duties. Our library manager took the position last year and she's in, uh, eligible for a step increase. Uh, these are mostly, these next bunch is uh, the 1% cost of living. We uh, we hired a new collection management processing lead, and, uh, reduced hours from what that was before, so that's a encounters in, uh, accounts for the drop there other changes are negligible the branch staff here on line 19 have increased uh, again by that uh, half hour a week so that accounts for that significant growth there And then the benefits, again, the major change there is in the health insurance. Any discussion about the personnel services? And this is with the 1% cost of living increased. All right, let's go to the other LB. 31 for materials and services. And the collection development, if we look back at the history of expenses there, 15, 16, we're at 95, 16, 17, 99, drop down to 91 for 17, 18. And then we were able to really boost it uh, with some surplus funds in 1819 and again this year. So if our 2% growth of the county comes in at 3%, we can add that 10,000 to the collection budget or some other need. That's generally how we handle it. those uh, unanticipated increases. SAGE has not increased its rate this last year. Facilities management, uh, keeping that high. It's a $13,500 increase from our original budget this year. Janitorial contract. This is based on a kind of guess for a wage rate per hour for the branch branches to be cleaned for an hour after every uh, shift and bumping up our 
cleaning at the main branch to seven days a week. That'll take some extra janitorial supplies, so that's increased. Bookmobile, uh, we had some significant repairs um, to the radiator this last year. Um, it's been having a lot of work done in the last couple of years. I am dropping that down a little bit in the hope that it won't have a major event, um, but it's kind of in a middle ground um, for average costs in, in the past. Insurance uh, rate increase is expected to be $1,800. That's based on history. Don't expect that we'll be doing a lot of traveling this next year, so I've reduced that line down to 4000 from its uh, original budget of 8500 this year. Here's our election cost, 6500 is budgeted for this next year. Audit, we bid that out this last year, um, and the cost has been reduced down to 7,500 this year. Next year, I'm budgeting 7,800 for an increase. Uh, publication, we so many people just don't know about our services, so the more we can uh, uh, purchase marketing uh, to get the word out, especially at, at this time when people are apt to stay home, let them know. Uh, what we have and how to access it, the, the better. So I've increased that to 3,000. Legal administration, this is mostly, uh, we started putting our uh, costs for pub publishing legal notices in this line, rather than lawyer fees. Public programs, those are adult programs. Uh, I've got that at 2,000. Um, we generally spent about 1500 in previous years. Library services supplies, this is uh, increased. That's where we're expecting our personal protective gear to uh, be posted. About 5000 there. Uh, youth programs has increased a little bit. We do support uh, halfway uh, youth program for their art council and have had more activity in Haines and other branches. So we've got plenty of money allocated for what they need to do. Utilities, as I said, is uh, mostly due to the heating expense this last year. Um, so fairly unchanged from our revised budget for the proposed year. And telecommunications is increased a little bit uh, based on history, I believe. Any questions about that detail? That's great. Our next legal budget sheet is a summary of those two detail sheets, the LB30. Uh, lumps the salaries and the benefits, the total personnel service for, for that category, and then uh, the major divisions for the materials and services. But those are okay, aggregates. Again, of, the 12.5% increase in benefits is largely due this year to the insurance increase. 12.5% in increase of... So, I'm looking at the change uh, where it says percent change of, on benefits. Oh, I see, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so the benefits, that's mostly due to the health insurance that's increasing by 15%. And we can see that if we go back to the detail. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
so the group health insurance this year is 98,000. Next year, the quote is for 117,700. That's actually a little bit more than 15%, 15 15.7. Wow. All right. Um, I just wanted to ask one question, which uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm sure I'm I'm just curious about the capital outlay. You put in the capital reserve. Is that better access to? Is that why? I mean, why why do we change it from a capital outlay fund to a capital reserve? I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just I just mm -hmm. think why. Well, that's a good question. So, um, capital outlay is more for immediately planned projects. Um, like for this year, um, the, we're putting the boardwalk renovation in there mm -hmm. and the handrail, things that are capitalized, mm -hmm. and the capital reserve fund, um, it's the special fund where using for major projects that we have to save up for. Okay, that, and that makes sense, and it's a way of seeing them in different light, right? Instead mm -hmm. of just nibbling away at the one fund without without tracking it. Yeah. Year by year. So, yeah. so you're saying that 10,000 is all you really intend to spend on the capital projects this year? Yes, yeah, that's like the cost of okay. one or two. M fairly major capital uh, projects. I, it was a projects. I just wondered what you would think. Mm -hmm. That's good. Very good. Um, you. You're welcome. So the I keep forgetting that this LB30, the state has revised the form and they've got a couple of tabs here. So we just looked at the allocated sheet and they've also got this not allocated sheet that includes the debt service payment uh, that's uh, our portion uh, mm -hmm. for the resort street improvement project we pay two thousand dollars a year for that and then our transfers out this uh, year we're transferring one thousand for technology reserve and then uh, fifteen hundred for election Next year, we won't be transferring out the election portion, just the 1,000 for a, a technology reserve. And our severance liability for um, retiring staff to be paid out of, for their unused uh, vacation leave and half of their sick leave. And we're well situated on that reserve. Um, we could actually reallocate that 10,000 or half of it for another need if we if we really needed to. Um, and the capital improvement fund, as I mentioned, we're, um, we were planning on transferring 10,000 for this next year. We're adding 25 to that to make it 35. Transferred over to that fund. We keep uh, just a small amount uh, for operating contingency. This is kind of a mirroring of what we uh, keep in the personnel to cover the staff portion of our deductible for if they uh, they have major health expenditures our deductible is 3,000 and they pay half of that so uh, we usually get two possibly three on a busy year of those claims for about 4,500 um, but we actually have 6,000 held in personnel to cover that, and this is uh, another 5,000 we keep in case there's, there's, there's uh, extra activity in that line. So this reserved for future expenditure plus the fund transfers, it's our total requirements not allocated to 452,000 for 
total of 1,709,950. That should match what we have for resources. Let's go back to the LB20, just double check, which is right here, okay. 1,709,950, that looks good. Uh, other funds. All right, it's hard to, for me to tell what which one I'm pulling up here from my screen. I apologize. Uh, let me find the other fund. Here. Okay. So basically, a um, little change here. We did have an increase in our uh, cash carryover, which we're adjusting for the revised budget this year. Uh, next year, just a slight increase from 160 to 165,000. Interest is about the same at 3,500. Transferred in at 11,000, that's the 10,000 of severance and 1,000 for technology. Grants and loans, um, we usually budget 10,000 there um, for the average amount we get from Leo Adler grants. Um, donations is based on history, about 2,000. Book sales have been a little slower, um, but who knows, this next year could be back up to normal, 5,500. For, which is below the uh, prior year histories. And then we have them, those resources allocated for Memorial, uh, 102,000 for Memorial and Grants. Literacy pool has 1,500. Technology, 4,500. Severance liability pool, adding that 10,000 will bring it to 81,000 and transferring out, which goes back to the general fund, 6,000 for election and book sales that help supplement our book budget. Okay. All right, so next is our SAGE fund. And this is already looked at by the SAGE User Council and approved. Um, so we really don't mess with it much. I'll just show you what they have. Uh, their cash carryover for this year actually increased by 10,000 to 205,000. Um, they're spending 15,000 of that out. So next year their cash carryover will be 190. They get about 220,000 in membership dues. They did not, I think, well, they did raise it by two and a half percent this this year. So there's a slight increase there. Um, grants, they get a, about $58,000, $60,000 from the state library for support of Courier, the Sage Library System Courier, transiting interlibrary loan materials between libraries. And miscellaneous revenue, these are um, billings of, for services um, based on subscriptions back to the members that we collect to pay things like um, uses of getting catalog records. They have uh, one main staff, the systems administrator. The salary is 62700 next year. That's a 3% cost of living increase that they approved for that. Uh, we pay our staff, Christine, for five hours a week for her accounting for the SAGE budget, 6180 for that. Benefits calculated here, and their various operations expenses. Um, the biggest one for them is they contract out for a, um, a, 
support staff for the system administrator uh, that says 65,000. That, that person lives remotely out of Port Towns in Washington. And not major changes. Uh, Courier does expect to grow a little bit. They've got a couple of reserve funds, capital outlay for server replacement that's standard at 25,000, just in case they have some major systems go down and an operating contingency of 16,000 um, that's unallocated. Um, their actual operating reserve is 150,000 for a total of 476, which matches their income. So we're good there. And our last legal budget sheet will be the reserve fund, and that is very simple. We did make a couple of changes. Uh, hadn't had any interest added there for in the income line, so about 400 is expected to be added to the 55,000 this year. Um, next year, Christine said we'll get about 800. Um, but we're adding some money to that uh, pool now, so uh, I'm increasing it to 1,200 for a total budget of 91,600, and that's all posted in the requirements at the same amount. Where's the 91,000? Where is that? So nice. Okay. So here it is in the resources, cash on hand, res reserve, transferred in 35, 1,200 interest for a total of 91.6, and then the expense line here, 91.6 for the total of the same. Aletha, those funds have been moved into a new pool account. So we created a new, another LGIP account so that we had a place to put those funds separately from other okay, funds. Okay. Got it. That's the that's the number I'm not seeing. Okay. At the moment, there's fifty thousand two hundred and sixty-five dollars in that account, and then we'll be adding the money that Perry has. Okay, that explains it. Thank you. Good. All right, so um, that covers all the legal budget sheets. I've included in the chat window a link to the updated re uh, resolution with the new figures. Um, if you would like to pull that up, it should be a PDF file. Oh, yeah, that's the old one. Is there any questions or discussion about the budget? Just, uh, it was masterful, that's all. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I'm amazed at the uh, how well you've taught Perry, Alita. Well, well, you know, I see this mine more humble and his are lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I see the same LBs and the same, but it's really well done. And your budget message is excellent, Perry. Thank you. So is this where we ask someone to uh, make a motion to approve this? Uh, let me go back to the agenda. Yeah. I think we have, we have public, comment. public comment. Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> public comment period, yes. And I don't think we have anybody, unless they're by phone, that we can't see on our list. 
don't know that we have anybody attending for yeah, public comment. There, 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 uh, Perry, there, there could have been public uh, because it, this uh, a meeting was uh, publicly announced. Uh, apparently, we don't have any. Right. Have, I used the website to get the link. My, the link that I had wasn't working, so I went to the website. And so anyone that wanted to look at that. Oh, great. Link. Great. Oh, good. So any other questions or deliberations on the budget? If not, we could entertain a motion to approve the budget. Well, I, I'll move to approve the Baker County Library District budget for 2021 fiscal year. Total amount of $2,362,775. And the amounts per fund as shown on the chart. So those figures weren't updated with our new ones bob we'll have okay. to amend that to two million four hundred seventy five three hundred seventy five dollars okay, my sheet doesn't show read it off of the uh, screen Mary has, uh, can you move it over perry yeah there i we don't go. think bob's by phone so i don't think bob's going to be able to see that yeah Okay. Or Bob, Bob, you could just say as amended or as, as presented tonight's budget. Okay, as amended uh, as for a budget. Well, the whole thing should be read. The general fund, the other funds, the stage, all of those should be spoken. Okay, but my Bob. sheet doesn't show the correct amount. So why don't I withdraw my motion and someone else can make it off of their corrected sheet. I can make the motion. Uh, I'll move move to approve the Baker County Library District District budget for the 2020-2021 fiscal year for the total amount of two million four hundred seventy-five thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars, and the amounts per fund as shown below. Uh, general fund one million seven hundred nine. Hundred thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. Other fund one hundred ninety-seven thousand um, dollars. Library system fund. Sorry, four hundred seventy-six thousand eight hundred five. And reserve fund capital investment uh, ninety-one thousand six hundred for a total of uh, two million four hundred seventy-five. $100,375. I also move to approve tax rate. Sorry, would you mind scrolling up a little? My buttons are in the way. Barry. Yep. That's, I think it was a delay. Could you move your screen just a little? My... Yeah. It, should, oh, it gotcha. should be coming through. Thank yeah. you. Uh, tax rate of 0.5334 per $1,000 of assessed value in support of the general fund and a tax rate from the local option levy of uh, 0.249 per $1,000 of assessed value in support of the general fund. Good. I second the motion. All those in favor? And that's my motion. By saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed signify by saying no. Motion carried. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Perry. <clears throat> Thank you, Perry. Thank you, Perry. I'll Perry. see what I can find out about uh, the county and other comparative libraries. Um,
I've heard a lot of uh, city libraries, county libraries that are um, furloughing staff, cutting staff, um, since they're less tied to property taxes as we are with, fortunate to be as a special district. Um, the city's libraries are especially are tied to uh, income from fees and libraries are one of the first services to get cut. Like I pointed out, we're we are very likely to be in for the next five years in a a um, more somewhat of a recession. We hope not um, as serious as we move toward the five year point. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like at least statewide our incomes are going to be affected by this closure and by potential future uh, um, affects to the state income level right. and to the taxes from um, jobs and from employment. Uh, it looks like we have a five year span here right, before we're really out of the woods. And you know that Baker County typically follows behind that a little bit. Right, so. right. I would like to point out one thing that if indeed at the end of this fiscal year, you see a similar uh, over 2% uh, uh, tax revenue, like you saw over the 2% this year, if it's like 2.8 or something like that, um, and it's consistent, I, th I think that you consider uh, the staffing um, costs because uh, you're still open like 100% of the time offering the same quality service. And where things are being furloughed, there's reduction in services and that sort of thing. And it can be very frustrating for the public. So if we're serving the public and if the public is delivering the percentages uh, to run a service they desire, then mm -hmm. we need to you know, keep an eye on it. Yeah, I agree. So uh, Linda, uh, yep. I see the last thing on the agenda is uh, for you, uh, Recess or adjournment? Are we adjourned? We are adjourned. Thank All you. Right. Well, I, yes, and, and I want to uh, thank everybody on the part of the uh, library board for the great turnout tonight. And uh, we will be having you see at the bottom of the screen. Uh, our next regular board meeting will be June 15th. And, uh, and then we'll uh, do the final adoption of the budget. Uh, Thanks to all your uh, help in uh, preparing it. Thank Good you. Evening. Thanks, everybody. Cookies. Thank <laughs>